And welcome back, everyone. It's off the page. It's Friday, even though this is Thursday, because we're going to miss C2E2. Well, I say we, yeah, we, because Joe's not going to be here no. today. If you're listening to us on Friday, we are recording this on Thursday. So we have zero news because everyone is holding off to the weekend. So hopefully next week will be a bit yeah. better. Yeah, I, I think it's great to tell people that we're doing this on a Thursday because, yeah, C2E2 is, starts on a Friday. I think not on a Thursday, so. It's just covering no like, oh my god, you missed everything. Is that? Yes. Yeah, it's like, yeah. Yeah, we didn't, didn't have the time. <laughs> you can't miss what isn't there. It's true. And there's nothing there. Because C2E2. We too. So yeah, um, Google us, comment podcast everywhere. You will find the patrons, which are on screen right now, or have been, either one. You know who you are. You, you're the best. Uh, you will find our Facebook, you will find our Twitter, and on Twitter you will find us at Comic Book Cast as always, and us at Mitch692 and Halftime Joe. We have a new banner, which I, I yeah. really like, the Thanos. I love that post, I need that. I just I wish it was more clear, I told Mitch uh, off the show, that the picture, when the, it was like a new poster for like, Okay, the Black Order, right? So we'll just call him that. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. Thanos and the Black Order. Okay, because I don't know what they're officially going to call him. Like Thanos and his children, oh, no. Thanos the Black Order. They're, they're officially called the Black Order. Oh, okay, okay, okay. It's literally only Black Dwarf who they've changed to Obsidian Cole. Yeah. So, dumb. I just wish that picture was like more clear in a way because it's like not pixelated. There is a HD, there's a HD one out there somewhere. I That was the, the biggest, uh, like most like HD version I could find. Yeah, was the I'll, I'll try and find it. Yeah. I'm certain that when I first saw it, I hated. It's a great picture, though. I re- I would I would love to have that like any and any banner or anything like that, just because it looks epic. Sucks that you can't get the whole like Black Order in there because but they the, the big the big poster they do have all no all the big poster yes but on oh, the banner oh you mean the, you mean yeah. the banner yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> no, it's size funky photo, issue. Funky Photoshop, I reckon I could do it. I might have a play about that later. You know actually. what? There, you know there is actually a program out there that's like one size fits all, where you could change literally a one twenty by one twenty to like a nineteen twenty by ten eighty type of picture, and it doesn't yeah. like a pixelate like, like that. Yeah. It's crazy. See, this is why you use vectors instead of pixels because they never that they never did. That I mean, that's what it was. Uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, you can use vectors on Photoshop, but who cares? Uh, so, yeah, the only real bit of news we have is Extermination, Marvel has announced. And you can guess by the X part, it is the X-Men. No, they're not killing the X-Men, so don't panic. It's just they're sending the original five that Bendis brought in and never did anything with back to the past where they came from. Again, because they've already they've come back from the past as recently. So yeah, they're just they're just kind of we kind of assumed that this would happen. I mean, the, um, I can't remember who writes X Men Blue. I want to say Colin Bunn, but I don't think it is Colin Bunn. I'll look it up. You keep going. Oh uh, yeah, he no, whoever's writing it has said Bun. that it is they're Bun. gonna have. Oh, it is Bunn. Yes, that they're gonna have to go back in this book eventually anyway because everything's getting all fucky. And everything has been fucky. Um, now people, some people are going, "Oh, is this going to change something? Is this going to do this and that?" Um, if they stick to what Bun said, no, because when they go back, they'll lose everything that they've gained being here, and they'll just go back to being the original five. It's like they never really came to the present. Yeah, they'll. Yeah, yeah, yeah they'll just. You know, CBR said that they'll merge, which I'm pretty certain that's what Bun said anyway. But apparently, that's not right. So I don't know. I don't know really what they're gonna do. Of course, we're gonna learn more at C two E two. So. Um... Oh yeah, because you know, like you said, all the news is gonna come out this week. There's a bunch of like panels that are gonna happen. For, uh, specifically, maybe this because this is the most recent announcement out of the big two, like especially Marvel, like extermination. And I always love that the X is like capitalized or highlighted. <laughs> it's just a funny. But they thing. haven't. They haven't done it for this one. What do you mean? Just li- well, I mean, I guess when I'm looking literally... at. They've literally just put extermination as extermination. I guess when I'm looking at the cover, like the X. I mean, sure, the X is slightly. Well, yeah. It's very X Files on that cover. I, I love that. I love when they do it for the X Men stuff or the X. I mean, even in the Gifted, where everything has the capitalized X. I was just, yeah. 
I don't know. I find it uh, funny. It's just cheesy X Men, isn't it? But um, this isn't being brought to us by Colin Bunn. This is Ed Bryson and Pepe Larraz. So good job on Pepe Larraz getting more more stuff I, at Marvel. I mean, you're the one who's like reading uh, the books at the I've, moment. I've so I've how do you feel? Off, um, I've dropped off a of blue, uh, mainly because the Venom arc. I've got no interest in reading that. So <laughs> I've been reading it. Well, seeing um, like this, it's going to be done sooner rather than later. Oh yeah, I mean this. This comes out in August, doesn't it say? Um, let's check again. Pretty certain. Uh, you keep going. I'll check for you. Uh, no. Uh, yeah, August twenty eighth. Nope. It's oh oh. I thought you said something else. August. Yeah, it's August. Yeah. Yeah. August yeah, August twenty eighteen. The original five will be gone. Maybe something will be done with them as they leave. Who knows? Uh, yeah. It's. I don't know. It's about time. They've gone back. Like, if they actually were brought in and they were used for something, I would have been a bit upset that they were gone. But they haven't. The only thing really they've done with them is the Jean Grey book, and that's it. Yeah. And that led to Phoenix Resurrection. Which was really yeah, good. Yeah. I like that. Book. It was. It was pretty good. Good on Matthew Rosenberg. But, um, and I can't think what Ed Bryson's done. I want to say he did. Oh, what did he do? I don't want to say it's a Kingpin book because that was Rosenberg. Yeah, I'll check for you real quick. But, of course, this is Marvel pushing their agenda. I, just I don't know. I mean, it is an agenda. Oh, yeah, he's ta- he took over Old Man Logan and he's doing Iron Fist, yes. And he did Cable as well. So, mm. I haven't read his Old Man Logan. I didn't read Cable. I didn't read Iron Fist. So, I have really no opinion on it, Bryson, at all. But it's Pepe de Raz, so it's going to look good. I agree. I mean, just based off that uh, well, did he do the? No, he didn't do cover with Mark. No, Brooks. the cover was Mark. Cover yeah, was Mark but yeah. Brooks. Pe- Pepe de Raz did the. Um, he was Young Canny Avengers. Oh, uh, no, back, okay, now I remember that one. He did the start of No Surrender. He's coming back for No Surrender, actually. Um, what else has he well, done? Well, you know, Death of the Humans, Extermination of the X Men. They're always dying, both of those two. <laughs> so, well, this is the first. Oh, I say it's the first time the humans have died. It's the second because. Ewing tried to kill him off. He tried and um, didn't succeed. But yeah, you know, the X-Men are always dying. <laughs> but this is just the young, time-displaced yeah. ones. Just to get... No, you know, we, we don't need them. We don't need two Jean Greys. We, we don't I, need Cyclops. I, was, I don't know. I just find it funny how they're both, quote-unquote, dying uh, this year. And, you know, both fans... Yeah. I think fans of both of the teams or franchises kind of dislike the other, or at least a min- minority of them, not a lot of them, because oh, a lot, no, a lot no. of them like both. Uh, them, it, no, oh. muties don't like humans. humans okay, don't. so never mind. I thought it was just a minority. I guess it is a majority. But yeah, they both don't really like each other, but yet they're both like dying. So like when the death of Inhumans got announced, people that were X-Men fans were like, finally, it's not the X-Men. <laughs> and then the, the, it the, just gets the announced. Only, the only difference this time is everyone's happy the Inhumans are dying. I'm just like, oh. Aww. <laughs> Well, mostly because Donny Cates, but, you know. I, I'm... No, but mostly because they're dying. It's oh, just like, oh. Oh. I, I'm just mostly excited because Donny Cates gets to write the humans. Yeah, hopefully he, makes, hopefully he makes it quick. Um, if I it's mean, a one-shot. Do, do we think they're actually... I mean, I guess characters die for like a year and come back I or mean, something, right? I mean, no, they can't kill these love. Because if you kill, if these die, then everyone else, their counterparts in the present are going to die. No, I meant like, okay, I was going towards Inhumans, like you said. Oh, like, the Inhumans died. Nah, just die. make it quick. I was like, I mean, if they die, it'll only be a year. Like, there's never that five-year wait anymore. It's usually a year when characters say, quote, unquote, die. You say that, it's literally been five years since this Wolverine. Actually, you think... Um, when did Wolverine die? Wolverine died in like 2014. Oh, Charles okay, well, Charles Xavier died at the end of Inhumans. No, at the end of Avengers vs X Men, which was like 2012. Yeah. Uh, Jean Grey was dead for like 20 years. Oh, you're right. You're right on that. <laughs> you're right. Um, I can't think who else has recently come back. He's been dead for a long uh, time. All I know is, took a what, good three years till Wolverine came back. I say Logan was dead a lot longer than I expected him to be. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, he was dead, but there was still old man Logan. There was still I was going to say, to be fair, you would never have noticed he was dead because they <laughs> got rid of Green and replaced him with five. I, don't know, I, always, thought, I always think that's kind of funny. Um, but yeah, I mean, looks like the, the younger ones are going away. We're going to have the older ones. And 
see how it goes. I really like that cover, and I'll definitely probably be reading this. I feel like this is we're gonna be talking about this. This is gonna be one of the main things. So, oh yeah, yeah. I I gotta uh, check it out so we can talk about it. Mm. Yeah, yeah. It's no, it, it's it is about time. They they should have probably gone a couple of years back actually. But X-Men. it makes oh. it makes me makes me wonder what are they gonna do with the mainline X Men book? Ooh, yeah. Like we, we know Red staying on, but what about Gold and Blue? What's going on there? Are you just gonna get rid of them and have Uncanny back? We need the answers. We do need the answers. We do need the answers. But you know, it's it is what it is. I'll yeah. I'll read it. I mean, uh, like we said, we don't necessarily have a lot of news. I don't know if there's some topics you wanted to bring up, Mitch, while we. Bef- like quickly, anything like that? Uh, no, I can't. Nah, I mean, I have nothing either to be honest. Like, uh, at least, at least it won't be an hour and a half this time. It's true. <laughs> uh, it sometimes it goes longer. Well, that one time, I think it was because of the solicitations. Solicitations did take a long time to get through because there's they a do. lot to uh, compact in those. So we take like their top five and stuff like that. So. There's a lot to unpack in the solicitations. Compact, unpack. You know what? I'm just ready to. Pack, because <laughs> Joe's going away. I am going away, which is really why. I, <laughs> uh, yeah, do you want to just, I guess, get into the comics of the week? That yeah, was, like, you can a go into the comics. He wants to start. He wants to start. Um, I guess I can uh, take it. I'll yeah. go first with uh, my issue of Justice League, which is going to be Justice League Forty Two. Now. I feel the art on this did. I feel like this was the perfect art for what should have been with Priest in the first place. Like the yeah. art just always keeps changing, and I don't know why. But this is like I thought last week's art was like okay, that's good enough. But I thought this one like kind of goes with like the writing, and I guess my kind of criticism of this series right now with Priest is that it isn't going a hundred percent political. It's very yeah. like half in, half out type of thing, it feels like. And yeah. there are moments in it where they're like, okay, so there's some poli- t- politics to it. Like Redline is trying to uh, like do the whole Iron Man 3 thing where you think one guy's like a terrorist or one group is a terrorist, but actually it's just he- they're being used by the bad guy so that the bad guy can get like the- whatever he needs to get. And, the war profiteering. So. Yeah, I, I mean, that is interesting, especially in the Justice League aspect to it. When they even mention of, like, can we even do anything? Or would it go against, you know, the the treaty we signed and stuff like that? And Yeah. And are we criminals if we do this and that? And it is interesting to a point. But at the same time, they do, like I said, they go half in, half out. They do some of the pol- political stuff. But then at the same time, they're like, oh, yeah, we have, you know, Deathstroke just out here killing people, you know, just straight up, and th- yeah. there's no consequence to it. It's just him killing people. Um, so yeah, it's it's interesting to a point. So I'm so there's something more to the Wonder Woman story. Apparently, so she got shot, but there's something more to it. There, yeah, at, at least what they're trying to play off. So also, I like that the Green Lanterns, uh, Cruz and uh, Baz just. They're like, hey, let's go back to the watchtower. Wait, where's the watchtower? Like, it literally nah. got it flew, it went down, it got brought down to Africa. Like, that's where it is, and it's semi interesting. The art got better. I I would just say it's been an okay issue and an okay series. I I just really like that Priest is taking a chance and some of the storytelling he's doing. Where Aquaman was seen kind of in like an outfit where he has to hide who he is and like they're doing undercover stuff. Um, it's almost like agents of justice league in a way. Uh, mm. and some parts, and I wish they would take that more or take whatever. Just, I feel like they, they should have just done one of the things and done it a hundred percent instead of just doing little pieces of everything. But yeah, we'll, we'll mention one point. They do say the just us league is what they call it. <laughs> because it's finally, yeah, that was, that's what they, uh, I think Red Lion called them that because they always felt like Justice League only cared about themselves and doing them and stuff like that. I was like, oh, okay, that's a good point. You know, they're always in their watchtower looking from above and stuff like that. And you can make that point of you being down here with the people and always like having to fight for everything. What are the Justice League even doing? So mm. Sounds like you watched that, Devil. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, is, it is interesting to a point. I'll give it that. But I, you know, I'm just more excited for what's to come with Snyder on Justice League, to be honest. 
Yeah. So, yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say. It's just Yark got better, and we'll see what happens with Wonder Woman. I will mention that they are at least using Raven to good use, because now that she's out and about and just like, know about her and her, like, in metal and stuff like that, she's being used as kind of, like, where if they can't take the heroes to the hospital, she's the only one that could be the healer in, like, special yeah. circumstances. So, yeah, I, I think that's a good idea, so. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, my first one is going to be Black Butt number 12, and it's the final issue in the series. <gasps> it has been brought to an end. It makes me sad. The art is so good still. Oh, CJ Stewart, man. He's so underrated. Yeah. He needs more stuff. But he's doing Thor, so <laughs> it's all good. He's yeah. going to be old King Thor. Uh, but yeah, it's it's sad that it's the end. But it ended on a re- like, the good note it should have done. Did you read this one? Are you caught up on this I'm, series? Well, I mean, I haven't necessarily caught up. I skimmed this issue, though, <gasps> just in case. Sure. Just in case if there's anything important, and I mean, it's, it's it's good. I just don't know the backstory to it. Oh, basically, you know the jailer from the first arc, yeah, the big like cosmic jailer. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. they didn't actually end up killing him. He kind of just hid away in Blinky. Yeah. And when they came back to Earth, uh, you know, they they they're doing all their little stuff. They had the funeral for Crusher Krill. Um, they. Re- address the whole Captain America humans thing from Secret Empire a little bit. <laughs> yeah. And it's just like, it wasn't me. I didn't holocaust your people. Stop now. Um, and then Lash appear, like comes into the fold and Lash kind of triggers the Jailer to awaken Blinky and Blinky just transforms into it. And that's why it's back now. Yeah. And like, it's, it's just, obviously it's attacking Black Bow and I can't remember how his son, how Ahura comes back into it, but he's there, and um, him and Blinky are walking around like the de- uh, Black Bolt's mind and memories and going through all that. And there's just one panel where it's right before he gets his voice back, and Stuart just completely oh, like smudges the, the wormhole type of thing. Yeah, it's yeah, so it's a great panel. you do not see people fuck about panels like that anymore. Yeah, that's that's so really good. It, it makes sense, like with the style that's going on at the moment, and also kind of yeah. the tone of the book. You know, and it's a nice transition because obviously it's little kid black bolt gets his memories, and then it just goes whoop. Yeah, that, that's what I thought was great about it because you see both of them in that like little swirly thing, and then it goes to just straight up uh, adult black bolt. Mm. Yeah, it's just so I'm gonna, I'm so good at Mr. Series. Like, Stuart just brought like his A game for this. It's like no, we're going now. We gotta go. Of course, Jailer dies, and then you see like as the Jailer's vanishing, you see the original prisoner, the Inhuman sense that prison that eventually turned into the Jailer. He just eventually disappears as well, and then it all wraps up. You, know, you have your downtime. You know, Crusher Krill's back now. He didn't actually die. He just kind of turned into the ball and came out of the ball. <laughs> And he's teaching Black Belt how to cook eggs, and Black Belt can't cook eggs. It's just a really nice down moment. And then you hear, or Black Belt hears something on the roof of the apartment, and it's Medusa, and it's picking up from the end of Humans Prime. She's like, I told you I'd find you. And she's like, oh, my heart, is this, you're going to die. Is that why? It's like, why have you done this to me? It's like, you set all this up, and then yeah, it's so, yeah. No. It's, it's gonna it's gonna be sad because we you know we both love the Inhumans and it's like oh man they're gonna kill them all <laughs> but um, I should laugh like the cover obviously is Medusa and Black Bolt and then she's not in it till the very end and the final page is Medusa and Black Bolt I, so, oh. I really do love that final panel or that page mm. of it's just so them two with the moonlight and kind of like their bottom halves like their feet or lower body are blacked. Like they're blacked out and then the, the well, color. That's, I imagine that's more just because of the suit yeah. they have. Yeah, yeah. But I don't know, no. just the effect of it and then the way the artist drew and then the color up as well with the hair of Medusa. Mm. Or would you say but that's Medusa... the artist or the colorist who did that? Um, I, I believe... Because it looks like it's all color and no like, I be- art I around. believe Stuart is just the artist. Oh, okay. Not, I keep saying Stuart. That's his fucking Twitter handle. It's Christian Ward. Yeah. Tour. And he, he has, yeah, his, his Twitter handle is, I was certain it says Stuart or something like that, and I always get it mixed up. Yeah, Christian yeah. Ward's the guy, so ignore everything. So if he's just time. like the only one, then I give him props because I really love yeah. that hair effect at the very end. Yeah, because I'm, I'm pretty certain he paints it. him. 
I know he doesn't paint everything. It's all uh, Photoshop. But yeah, it's it's all him. There's no artist, other yes. It says writer Saladin Ahmed, artist Christian Ward, um, letter design, which is that logo design. That's other stuff. So okay, yeah, it's just him who's just doing all the coloring yeah. and all that. Um, I always feel like when I hear Tom Brevoort, it's kind of like Harry Potter. <laughs> Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, I, I could never pronounce. I always, well, I could never could pronounce Brevort's name. It's like, oh yeah, it's Brevort. Yeah. And I was always like Brev. But he Brevort. does, he does a great job, uh, Ward. And I, yeah. you know, I've always, you know, since this one started, we both just kind of admired his art and just kind of the style and how perfect it went with Black mm. Bolt. It's just so good. If he's very much a cosmic entity. Yeah, he definitely know. should be doing more cosmic stuff. Yeah. I mean, like, even even the um like the grounded stuff, like the apartment and the eggs, just like his panel layout and how he does everything, it's it's incredible. It's an there's an art to the panel layout, right? Oh yeah, definitely. definitely. Yeah, yeah, master that. But yeah, that's that's the end of Black Bolt. And oh, that's that's like literally the end of Black Bolt because then he's just gonna die. Oh, I hope oh. not. <laughs> you you can't kill Black Bolt. Black Bolt's the whining human people like. Let's just keep him alive out of everybody. I know I love the other ones, but I just if we could keep one alive, I'd want Black Bolt. I I count Black Bolt Medusa as one, so I'm fine with that. Um, but you, you know you can't you can't kill him off. You can't kill, especially you can keep Medusa and Black Bolt alive. Keep those two. If you have to kill them all off, keep those two. I agree. Um, and obviously keep Kamala Khan because people go fucking mental if you kill him. <laughs> that's true. That's true. All right. Yeah. Going on to my next one. I'm going to be talking about one of the new Age of DC Heroes books, The Curse of Brimstone. Oh, is this one the coming Ghost... out? I... Yeah, this is the Ghost Rider one. Yeah. yeah uh, I was going to read this, but I forgot about it. Yeah, so um, I will say uh, it, this is the first issue doesn't do much besides straight up give his origin of like at the end is when he becomes the uh, Brimstone yeah. character. Uh, so this all this thing is all just about setup, right? This whole issue is just about setting up the character, and I guess the town, the town is gonna have its own unique uh, character as well, of, like what it does and uh, around uh, this series. I I don't know per se what he's like doing or anything like that, like what his powers are. I'm just gonna assume he's just this monster who can. Do stuff with fire and stuff like that, right? Yeah, yeah. Cause, yeah, I, yeah. I, I'd assume for the most part he's essentially just a ghost. Because like a, this, this whole issue is just about there's this kid Joe. He li- he lives in this town called Yorkville, and everybody has left it, and he hates that everybody has left it because it used to be such a great town. He has pride in his city, and all he asks like the devil that he meets later. Which I will say, one of the cool things about this was that the quote unquote devil guy uh, was going to this town. He got stopped by a cop killed the cop but at the same time he says well joe's waiting for us so i guess we must be going like that's a little like oh whoa who's this guy and then you realize yeah. he's the devil later i i will i do love the art to it i think the art matches well and keeping kind of a like a shadowy type of feel to it where uh you see kind of like the the woods or anything like that it'll feel kind of like this is meant to be an hbo type of thing if you know what i mean mm. Yeah, like the art makes it seem like that. Like this would be on an HBO type of thing, and yeah, I I just love that he's the only reason he becomes this is because he just wants to help everybody else. Like he wants to help his sister, he wants to help his neighbor, he wants to just help the city, and he gets turned into this kind of like monster. You know, it's just the origin. It's the art is really uh, good. I'll give it that. I think it works well with this curse of brimstone kind of character. Uh, I'm gonna really enjoy that. I'm just curious where they take it from here. Like, who's going to be his villain? Who? What is, like, his main issue going to be of uh, the first arc? And kind of the backstory about this devil character. Because he has, like, this half mask on that only covers from his, like, nose up. And... Oh, like the old... The old, um... Like, masquerade masks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of like that. And, it like, he doesn't necessarily turn into a devil thing. It just brings out the mask... So yeah, it, it, there's some interesting stuff here, uh, but I you know there's nothing much I can say other than it just is a pretty good setup. Oh okay okay so here's like a synopsis of it. So because it gives you a setup of how he becomes it, but here I think it's like a what you, a tease of what to expect in the series. So um, Joe Chamberlain would do anything to save his small forgotten town, even make a deal with the devil. But things get worse when Joe finds himself 
cursed into the power of brimstone. With the power of fire and destruction cursing through his hands, Joe must now track down and destroy the demon he made his deal with before the power he now wields destroys the town he was trying to save. Oh. But as the fiery pain inside him grows, can the young man overcome his own demons before his power rips him apart from the inside out? Ah, oh, okay. Ah, it makes me interested. It makes me interested. So, yeah, that's kind of it, really. Uh, my next one is Marvel 2-in-1 number 5. Now, you've read this, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah, I love this series. I'm yeah. so happy it's continuing. <laughs> um, it's also a nice little peek into how the Iron Man book's going to look, because I believe it's Skitty doing that book as well. So, yeah, Iron Man's going to look great. Um, now, picking up from the last issue where it's... The Doom Lactus thing on this other Doom Lactus, such a good other uni- other universes uh, where all the heroes are shield, the Fantastic Four are split apart. Something's happened to Johnny. We don't know. If I get. I'm going to assume he was the comatose person in this issue that you saw for one panel, and then we'll no doubt find out in the resolution in the next next month. Um, you know, uh, Sue's working for Shield. Ben, I think, I believe is dead in this universe. Um, and Reed, he's just like typical Reed. He's just throwing himself into everything. You don't know why. I assume it's because he's got like a deal with Doom Lactus to not eat the earth and keep everyone safe or something like that. Yeah. But um, something's fucky. And because uh, our Ben and Johnny have arrived on this earth, it's caused that little rip in space-time and Doom Lactus has noticed that so he's coming here and he sent his silver Doom Surfers <laughs> that's so cool. and it's, it's like fan fiction <laughs> in a way it really is and it's just like okay I love the way they draw Reed in this and I really oh, yeah. hope that's how Reed's gonna be where he is it's more it's more like the maker and like the ultimate Reed Richards as opposed to just stretching it's like he can make like little hands out of his fingers and do all this yeah I just really like that Reed it's more much more stretchy and he gets really big and he's like, you don't understand. Uh, yeah, the majority issue is just like them fighting off the Doom surfers, Silver surfers. And then you get a really sad bit with Nora and Rad at the end. How many issues like, is oh. this? Uh, this is going on for at least 12. Okay, I forgot. This is the end of the first arc. But like, you know, it's, it's really nice to see the Fantastic Four again together, even though it's not our Fantastic Four. Even though that's but soon, though. That's soon. Oh, it's soon. It's August. You know, we're not far out. Yeah. It's, what, five months? Yeah. I, w- I wonder how Reed is just going to say, Four so months. what you guys been up to? Yeah, uh, you know, me and Sue and the kids, we just kind of been messing with universes. And Johnny <laughs> and Ben are just like... Look what Franklin what? made. What? Franklin. He made a universe? What? Like, I don't he know. made all this. Because they don't know Reed. they're doing that, right? Because we know at the end of Legacy, no. we saw them just doing that. And also at the end of Wars. Well, no, that, that was the end of Secret Wars. Yeah, so at the end, the end of, of Wars Legacy, too. But at the end of Legacy, we still saw them doing it, though. So, yeah. Yeah, no. All you ever saw of them in Legacy was Valeria and Franklin like riding around exploring. Ah, oh, but I'm going to assume Reed and Sue are still around. I mean, I'd, I'd assume they're still there. And, yeah. like, it's just the kids are exploring what they've been making. It's so, so obviously, that's what the Fantastic Four do. They're God, explorers. I love that one shot. It's, I'm, I'm glad to read it. I, I love, I, man, I love both their one shots, Rebirth and Legacy. I think those are like some great, okay. those are two great one shots right there. Mm-hmm. But yeah, obviously, yeah, I, I said Nori and Rad, it's, big, no, it's a Silver Surfer. He's he's not currently Chrome or Silvery. No. He's just Nori and Rad. But um, they need him because Doom Lactus is here. He's a farmer. He's a farmer. It's always a farmer. He's with Emma Frost for some reason. I'm intrigued. Like, yeah, okay. I didn't see that. That, that, that was kind of strange. No. I've, I've never known that relationship personally, but it's a different earth. He can do what the fuck you like, and they have. Uh, but yeah, it's... The, the Obviously, the arc's going to come to a close the next issue, so it'd be interesting to see how that goes. Also, our Doom shows up because our Doom has been following Ben and Johnny everywhere because he wants to multi-sect. Little multiverse okay, traveling love device. That outfit that Doom has. Our Doom. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm glad it's he still nice... has it. I hope he doesn't get rid of it. Yeah, but then yeah, it's, it's Doom. He's gonna have to go back to Doom eventually. Uh... At, at least kind of keep it like that. Make it maybe a bit less Iron Man-y. It is just the Iron Man armor. But... 
it will be what it will be. It, it does look really good though, with the three lights in the chest. Yeah. Also, long haired, angry, crazy Reed looks really cool. <laughs> <laughs> With gray beard. I wonder, I wonder how they're gonna keep. Well, we, no, we never saw their faces in that uh, cover art that teases the four coming back. We've only we saw their silhouettes, I think. So we don't know necessarily yeah. how Reed, Reed could have like this. Are he could be clean shaven. He could. Here's the thing. Um, the this week in Marvel podcast that they done with uh, Slot and Sabolski, Dan says that his Reed was the clean shaven crazy Reed. Oh, okay. So I'd imagine the reading that is going to be clean shaven, which much to my disgust because no, like no beard or don't bother, yeah, uh, or beard or don't bother. Um, but it'll be what it'll be. I just hope they take him more and like, oh look, I can make another read for my finger if I stretch really far. Mm -hmm. Like really make him OP. But no, it's you no know, Zadarsky. He he's, he could have easily have taken the Fantastic Four over easily. But he isn't. Luckily, he has got an extra arc after this, so he gets to carry on. I'm, I'm excited to see what he does, because this is just nuts. Like, uh, this is this is Donny Cates. It's like oh, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna do what I want. Like, forget your continuity. I can go outside of continuity and do what the hell I like. But yeah, that was Marvel two in one number five. Yeah. Okay. Um, my last one will be Batman. Uh, 44. Now, this is... I don't, I don't know if you heard about this one. This is like the full-on oh, well, Catwoman I, I, when I, she's choosing I her read, dress. Yeah, I read this one. I, I like how she chose the one black dress out of all the white ones. She's I like, mean, you knew she... Well, we, we knew she was going to have that dress anyway, but yeah. you knew it was black because she's obviously never going to be wearing white. I just thought that was funny. I was like, she could have just saw that from the <laughs> beginning, but all right. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's like a little... So half the issue, I would say, is kind of like a time thing she wakes up at like 2 a.m sneaks out of bed to go find the dress and she comes back around seven as um alfred is awake well shout out to alfred b being awake at like six seven in the morning getting everything ready gotta make your breakfast bro it's true true and bruce is still asleep of course but the other half is kind of like mini it's stories flash yeah it's, it's flashbacks to that their history together yeah you know? I know I enjoyed it. I, I, I thought mean, it was nice. Yeah, I enjoyed it, but I, I don't know. The flashbacks threw me off for a second. I was like, I wonder what this is about. But yeah, it's just to kind of like show how much history they have in a way where even back then they kind of cared about each other to some extent. And they really do have some history. As you can see, Catwoman kept changing outfits. Yeah. She, yeah. she rode a tiger at one point, a white tiger, <laughs> and he rode a horse. Okay. Honestly, I preferred the whole wedding dress stuff. Really? I could have just had the entire issue. I mean, that, that would have been fine like too. That. But I don't know. I guess just it, it intrigued me the flashbacks the most because like she just kept changing outfits and stuff like that. I was like, I wonder what they're doing Ooh. with that. I guess it kind of paralleled because well, she kept switching outfits say, in, in the wedding yeah. thing. They kind of paralleled with each other in a way until so she found yeah. the, the right one at the very end. But yeah, I would say it was a really good issue. Like Tom King did great. I mean, there's I'd assume this was him like hit, creating the story of like, all right, this is what she's going to be doing. And then the artist, like, doing that, so... Because there's not necessarily... I mean, yeah. there is dialogue, but there isn't on that other half. It's just her, like, choosing dresses. Oh, yeah, dresses. It's she's on her own, isn't she? Yeah. yeah. He didn't need that. Though, no, I know, I know. I'm just saying that's why I think, like, Tom King did a pretty I, good I was, job. I was just that. saying, I was just saying that I didn't need it. But, no, I, I enjoyed this issue just as a little yep. one shot. That's why I don't I don't think there's much else I can say about it other than Tom King, Tom King did a good job of paralleling both of those things that were happening in this issue and of course making Catwoman's personality shine without any dialogue needed uh, because she chose the black dress and she you know she got, went straight to the liquor and stuff like that and the, it cost $20,000 but okay shit <laughs> that's a lot I, I mean it, it can get expensive I, right? I'm sure it can get expensive <laughs> yeah. so yeah I thought that was um Pretty good. Like, I thought he did a pretty great job in showing off her personality. I'm assuming the next one's going to be Batman doing this kind of similar thing, like choosing his thing, but in his own way. Yeah, I'd assume. Well, I mean, Maybe. I suppose, yeah, because the two covers are the same, aren't they? You have the something old, something new. Yeah, because I thought this one was going to be half, like, they both sneak out and they both try to sneak back in before the well, other one goes. Well, you would just thought, because yeah. why wouldn't have Bruce got up and gone after her? <laughs> 
that or just why he go after his own thing. Like, yeah, the two covers are there's Batman and yeah. there's uh, so yeah. Cut. But I don't know. I just thought that's where I would have went. But I, this was still fine of showing the flashbacks and their history together and. Uh, kind of like even when Robin was like straight Robin at that point where he had like the full on Robin outfit. So, yeah, 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 that's all I pretty much can say. It was just a really good uh, book. The art continues to be great and we'll see how it goes and hopefully the wedding lasts. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's if they actually ever get married. I think they will. You still have that thing that they won't, right? I don't believe they will. It's Superman. Well, I, I, no, I don't believe they will. I, I, I can see them not. Having it go through. What if it's Plastic Man as Catwoman? He's just I mean, himself. sure. Why not? All right. He, he yeah. came out of the egg. Continuity ever. Right <laughs> uh, my last one is Avengers number 687. It's part 13 of No Surrender. And it's a little bit of a... Not slow. It's not slow at all. That This book's quick as fuck. Um, but it's more downtime. Yeah. Of course, like everything's come to a head. You know, the Hulk's turned back into Banner. Banner's there. Jarvis is up and walking again now, so he comes back to the little Avengers HQ area. And it's just, it's more recapping, not recapping, but it's putting a pin on the first two acts and being like, right, we've got three issues left. This is how it's going to be for the next, like, for the last uh, like, act of this story. So, uh, you know, you get. For some reason, Wasp was the closest to Voyager in these fake memories, and she's trying to come to terms with that. It's like, I, I, it, it, and it was weird. She's like, oh, I'm forgetting everything, but I, I remember I was the closest. It's like, well, how do you know that if you're forgetting everything? It was kind of weird to me there. But it's whatever. Um, you know, and you get Voyager just being like, you know, I just wanted to be an Avenger. This, that, I would, and she's explaining everything to them, so everyone's now on the same level playing field. Uh, you get Jarvis talking to Banner, and ba- no. Banner's being typical Banner. He's like, "Oh my God, no, I'm Banner." Jarvis is like, "No, shush, you're fine." <laughs> like hell, heaven, and hell are what you make of it. It's a really nice conversation. I'm not doing it justice. Really well written. Um, Tony Ho gives up fixing Vision because she hasn't got any of the spare parts she needs there. It sets up Quicksilver's little mini that Saladin and Med doing i think that starts either this month or june this one it's got to be soon but like he, he's chasing these little blue things these little blue orbs that are moving faster than anything can sit keep up with but he can keep up he's super quick um and they're keeping certain people in stasis and they explain why certain people are in stasis but i can't think what the reason was at the top of my head but anyway yeah um you get if you don't know anything about the elders of the universe, you get a nice little uh, history lesson from Voyager about everything and like how they need to do certain vices. Is They're it all the left over. Oh, that's the collector. Yeah, am I? I saw him right there. Yeah, yeah, that, the panel. yeah. The collector's one. Look at the gardener. The earring. The collector has the earring. In the... Or is that the collector? Which was the collector Where? in this panel? In this panel of what all the. Um, elders in, in the in the big like panel where you got the the grandmaster in the middle, the collector's literally on his left holding the glass. Okay, that's, he's also he's also in the right. panel below. Or, yeah. or on, on our left. Okay, like, yeah, that's what I was glass. thinking. That he's the one with the earring. Okay, does he have an earring? Yeah. Oh, he does. Yeah. yeah, he's also in the panel below holding the glass with the gardener. Yeah, you got the gardener. You got the um, you got the champion of the universe. I, I do I, love I that think, panel. Actually, well, uh, I, I think. Go ahead. It's quickly the big panel actually. I think are the ones that had the Infinity Stones been originally, because ah. you got the runner there, you got the champion, the Grandmaster, the Gardener, the Collector. And I can't think who that other one that is. That doesn't look like Goldblum. <laughs> but he's blue. <laughs> gold blue. And he's got blue on it, so he's gold, gold blue. Gold blue. <laughs> um... Yeah, so you, you get a nice little thing in there, and obviously it's the, the, she's just going over what makes an elder an elder. And then it, it, they, she explains to them that the challenger resurrected the Black Order because he thought it'd be this. Uh, Grandmaster resurrected the or made the Lethal Legion because he think they'd be underestimated and like yeah. give him a little bit of an edge. I, just, I really like that panel where it goes old school and it even does like the little uh, yeah. Gr- yeah. grading type of thing where uh, there's you know you could tell like oh that looks like it could be from an old comic type of thing. 
Yeah, I was just actually looking at it. I was like, is it actually from? I don't think it is. No, I think but it yeah, is. But yeah, that goes over, like, you know, because obviously the Avengers have come across the Grandmaster before, so you've got, like, the first appearance and you've got the first uh, Game of Galaxies, like, little thing on there. So obviously it's got Hyperion. That's where Hyperion came from. Uh, yeah, and obviously this is kind of saying the Grandmaster's dead because he's just a black smudge on the floor at this point. <laughs> he's just a scorched shadow. And uh, the, the Challenger's pissed off, so he's now coming down to earth so everyone is now gonna have to fight him in seven days because it's obviously weekly before uh, yeah the, this planet is a pestilence upon the universe it's time for it to be purged wow what a way to like make an entrance he just comes down from a beam in the sky and says that i always wonder when they say that do, do they think people can hear them or do they speak that loud that it goes across the whole well, I, world i mean they he just landed in the middle of a city, didn't he? So yeah, it's like <laughs> is he speaking so loud that the whole city can hear him? Maybe like I I assume I always wonder like if Thanos stuff. does that like is, is he hoping somebody hears him? He's like all right, let's go. Like I don't know because it's, the... it's more just like de- like the declaration to for, for their own personal thing, right? Because I always find yeah. that funny when villains do that. Like they land somewhere, they say something that like they're gonna do this. But I always wonder, can yeah. the good guys even hear them? Or is... <laughs> I mean, I don't think the Avengers can hear them. Cause I don't think they're anywhere near him. Like, but people. That, that's why in comics, it always, to me, sounds like, the, like especially like a villain like him and how powerful he is, his voice just travels throughout the whole world and everybody can hear it. I don't yeah. know. It just sounds I like mean, that's I mean, something that not? could happen. Yeah. I mean, it, it could make sense. Like, yeah. So, yeah, that's, that's the end of Avengers 687. And that's the end of the show. Yeah. Um... I like the the. Have you, did you see the cover for six eight nine where it has, um, the Grandmaster and it's like it's a really good cover and has He's like cards. In the cards. Yeah, and, that's yeah. a really good cover. I, I forget who's doing the cover art like for that in six ninety, but uh, really I I want to say it's the same person who's doing the Extinction book. So I, Mark, I've been liking the Mark. Surrender, honestly. And I like, I've been really enjoying. It. It's I, a very much a classic yeah. style of adventure story. But say anything cosmic like with the elders and stuff like that. I'm oh, down yeah, for. Yeah. It. I I want more of like. The elders. I want more of like any like um. What are they called? What are they called? The people like, not the elders. What are they called? That Celestials. Celestials. Okay, I couldn't. Oh, yeah, that yeah. Word. I mean, you're gonna get that with Jason Aaron's Avengers. Yeah, I won't. Yeah, because of the whole legacy thing, and of course, because we saw them in the movies too, and I would like to see them more in the movies. But at the same time, you can't have a Celestial movie, which I wish. Well, uh, he's like you know there was that or oh, there's a rumor going around the minute oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. that it's the Eternals that which are going to be sounds so through. epic if that's true, which I'm not gonna put a hundred percent in. Uh, apparently, it was what they were planning, but you know, me and I mean talking about so apparently it was what they're planning, but it's it's been bumped off for X Men: The Fantastic Four, which is kind of sad. But if they were gonna do it, the Celestials would have been that because they made the Eternals. Look, they can. I mean, there's always got to be a progression, right? And yeah. if you do Eternals and Avengers Four, it's like, can you go any bigger? That's the biggest. I mean, yeah, it, like the Eternals aren't the be all and end of. I mean, I guess, but like, not with you know. the Celestials because you can go for like the cosmic concept. You can go so. for the universe, like because there's seven yeah. universes as the Marvel Comics I mean, titles. Exactly. <laughs> that's that's always crazy. I always love the Ultimate Square Man. Oh, why did it have to go? Yeah, it's sad that ended. Yeah. yeah. At least it ended on a good note, though. Yeah. All right, so I guess uh, that's going to be it for me and Mitch and Toodles. Until next time.